And we're back on Rabbit Noise on Rabbit Radio. Now, Unearth have been shredding world stages for almost 15 years now. Sold around 500,000 albums worldwide, and they have one of the most loyal fan bases around, especially down here in Australia. The band have recently released their amazing new album, Watch as a Rule, and joining us on the program now to talk about everything Unearth is the one and only Buzz McGrath. What's happening, man? Nothing much, man. Greetings all out there in Radio Land. Dude, it's awesome you could join us. So uh, you're on tour at the moment, or you're about to head out, is that right? No, we're, we'll get one out in a couple of weeks uh, with a little band called Crowbar. I don't know if you ever heard of them, but they're the heaviest band of all time. That is awesome. How did that come about? I don't know. Just uh, got a phone call, said, hey, you want to go on tour Crowbar? And we're like, sure, that sounds like a good idea. We're big fans, so. And we need to tour because we have a new record out so people can get to hear it. Yeah, and it's a great album, man. Yeah, I've, I've been absolutely loving it. Are you planning on playing uh, a, a few tracks off the new album? Yeah, we'll we'll have about three or four in the set. Um, you gotta you know you gotta play it live so people can hear it. I mean, maybe somebody who's at the show doesn't know you. Hears here's a new track. Says, all right, I'll go out and get that. That's what it's all about, I guess. Yeah, but uh, have you found that that's happened very often? Like, uh, you know, a dude will bring a mate along and isn't too familiar, and then walks away a a happy customer. Yeah, I always like to hear about that too. Like, people will be like, "Dude, never heard of you. You guys are awesome." buying the record like you know you read about that online too maybe people message you or you see a comment on facebook or youtube where people never heard of this band i'm always surprised i'm like you never heard of us we've been around for like a thousand years <laughs> so it's uh, that's always good new fans you know i love them as much as you know the diehards who are keeping us going well they become diehards don't they they do i mean because we you know we we put out honest heavy metal music with no bullshit so it's like it's hard to even hate it that's right man and uh you know as I was saying, it's a great album. It's you know, it's really heavy and listening to it, I think you guys have really outdone yourselves with this one. It's it's great, man. Did you did you get the feeling it was going to be really special when you started working on it? I guess we got the feeling that it was gonna be special in a way, but special in a way that it was like kind of the most aggressive thing we've ever done. What really did it for me was like a new drummer Nick. He can pretty much do anything, so that really opened the door for us to as guitar players to really write whatever we wanted to write and not have to worry about the drummer's capabilities on whether he could do a certain part or not. So that really expanded what we could do, and that really made it fun to write because there was really no boundaries. As you were saying, man, it, it is a really aggressive album. It, was that the plan when you, you went to uh, sit out and write it, or it's just how it all came out? That was kind of the tentative plan, like, but... At the same time, like when I said, when we sit, sit down to write, you know, that was a lot of the stuff that came out just was in that vein. Um, you know, I, I love like slow melodic stuff, but that just wasn't really coming out of me at the time. And what was coming out of me was just kind of fast, aggressive, you know, heavier stuff. And I think with Nick, Nick Pierce's influence on it too, it made it even, even heavier. And I, you know, you know, kind of wanted to be more aggressive for sure, just to maybe get people's attention. So you, people are like, oh, did you hear that new on Earth? It's fucking crazy, you know. So maybe somebody will, who wouldn't really even give it a chance out of the gate would, you know, maybe give it a listen. That's that's what a lot of people have been saying, man. How heavy it is, you know. A lot of people I know that are just raving about it. So cool. yeah, then th then it worked. It did work. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man, definitely. Well, um, you also recently played the uh, Housecore Horror Film Festival. Yep. Yeah, well, that was uh, you know Danzig and Decapitated and Superjoint did a. Uh, a reunion which is amazing how was that how was that experience for you that was a lot of fun uh we didn't really see a lot of the bands because we flew in uh, i think we played the first day we flew in and flew out so uh we played with um origin was on our day and then saw a band called uh portal which i believe is from uh your part of the world that's right, right up here in brisbane and i think everybody wanted to see them like everybody talked about it, like dude you gotta see portal you gotta see portal so i checked it out and it was just like so uncomfortable like i think that's what they were going for which is rad like it was the whole place just kind of stood there scared almost so that was cool so it was good to see them they didn't have any merch if if anyone if anybody from the band hears this i couldn't find merch and i had people friends of mine placing orders because they knew i was there i would have i would have spent three hundred dollars on merch myself <laughs> for my friends <laughs> they've actually got some pretty cool shirts and stuff too that's, that's strange they didn't take any over but they're they're a band that's definitely Definitely something different, man. When you listen to their albums, it's something else. It's it's got it's really disgusting. It yeah, you, it's really off, and that's what makes it awesome. It's just yeah, they, yeah. They definitely uh, are pros at that. 
Yeah, man, they're they're great. Well, um, you know, you said you you didn't get to see uh, really any other bands. What bands did you catch other than Portal and stuff? Uh, just them and Origin and Brian Posehn, which is just he's just a comedian. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's kind of a metalhead comedian, and uh, he just kind of stands up there and you know does his comedy bit, which was pretty funny. Yeah, he's uh he's on the uh, Sarah Silverman show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a funny guy, man. So you know, did Phil and Selmo just call you up and say get your asses to Austin, Texas? Yeah, I don't know how we got it, but uh, it was cool. And we hung out with Phil, and he was super nice. Like, we were kind of just sitting in the dressing room, and he came in, and he hung out for, like, five minutes. You know, he didn't have to do that. It was cool. Like, he's – that guy, to me, like – I don't know. He's a legend, you know? Like, I don't really get, like, starstruck too often, but it's like seeing him. I was like, wow, that's the fucking dude right there, you know? And he's he's a good guy, man. He's a really cool guy, really approachable and really good to his fans, you know? Yeah, he. Well, there was one time uh, a couple of years ago we were on tour, and uh, we played the same night as Down, I think, in Texas somewhere. And after our show, because I think we were playing early on on the bill, we uh, cabbed it over to the uh, to the Down show. And it was a venue that I've been to before, so I kind of knew how to get backstage. And I was going to go back there to see Kirk uh, you know, when he was playing with Down. Because I kind of knew him. I knew him mm-hmm. enough to go back there and say what's up, you know, get any beers. Uh, <laughs> so the first person I ran into was Phil. Like, I took a corner and he was there. And he was standing right in front of me. I was like, well, that's the fucking guy right there. And we talked for like 10 minutes because I think he might have thought that I was somebody else. <laughs> and so we just kicked it for like 10 minutes. Like, I couldn't fucking believe it. It was a lot of fun. Oh, that's that's awesome, man. Uh, do you, you know, you say you don't get starstruck often. But uh, apart from Phil, is there any other bands that you've been down the road with that have really, you know, knocked you back? I mean, Slayer was cool. Uh, they, you know, when you first meet them, it's like, wow, Slayer, but we were on a tour with them, so eventually that wears off and you kind of bro down with them, which is which is great to do. And uh, I met Metallica. Uh, I was doing some fill-in shows for uh, Mark Morton from Lamb of God, and they were on tour with Metallica in Europe. And we were just sitting there, and, you know, Headfield comes up to the table and just starts hanging out, and I was like, wow, that's... He's another one where you're like, yeah, he's that guy's fucking important, you know. It's funny when they walk in the, into the room, they've just got this. It's like the, everything, just the attention, just shifts straight to them, doesn't it? Yeah, and they're not even trying. They're just yeah. like they're just regular dudes, but the their accomplishments uh, kind of set them above, you know, put them on a pe- pedestal. It'd be pretty amazing to uh, be in those shoes, but uh, it'd also be pretty full on at times too, I guess. Yeah, but, I bet. But uh, you know, you you were down here for uh, Soundwave last, weren't you? Yeah, I think we did that in like 2011. Can we expect to see you guys back down here soon? I hope so. Uh, somebody, if if people there want to see us, then uh, yell at your local promoter, and uh, hopefully we'll get down there. Trying to get on the Soundwave. I don't know if there's one more announcement of bands or if it's already filled up, but we're somebody's i'm told someone's working on it ah see we're waiting <laughs> i think it's a couple of days they just announced non-point and bayside just to keep yeah. people sort of from hassling them but um yeah a couple of days so i'm i've got my fingers crossed man because uh, you know, if it's in a couple if it's in a couple of days and i doubt we're on it because i haven't heard anything about it i would be surprised if we are oh uh, well, man, I've got my fingers crossed anyway. Either way, you know, I hope we see you guys soon because, you know, you guys are amazing live. So, you know, do you guys have like a, a pre-tour ritual that you go through before you head out on the road? No, no. I mean, show-wise, you know, usually at the show we do like about an hour before, you know, maybe we'll crack a couple beers, take a couple shots, loosen up. Uh, but that's about it. You know, nothing too, you know, we don't dress up in pajamas and run around in a circle <laughs> or anything weird, you know. Just, uh, the pre-beer ritual. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty basic. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. We're going to go to the track, The Swarm, from, uh, Watch as a Rule now. Thanks for hanging with us tonight, Buzz, and, uh, wish you the best of luck with the album and the, the upcoming tour with Crowbar, and, uh, we'll, we'll see you guys soon, hopefully. Awesome, man. Thank you for having me, and, uh, yeah, hopefully we get down there pretty soon.